Planned Parenthood has used it. They had a reputation for having to do an online business, and they were also going to make sure that we were going to be able to do structured histories. So, how would it work? Well, let's show you a picture. Uh oh, where's my thing? Well, a patient who says, gee whiz, I want to do an online consultation, would go to the Mayo Clinic patient portal. And when they get there, they have to log in. We want it to be secure. So they put in their ID and then their password. And they log in. All right, once they get there, and this is sort of a demo project, what they would do is click on online visits. Now your perception of what an online visit is, is probably email. It's totally wrong. Let me show you how it really would work. The first thing is you'd be asked the question, do you want to hear this in English or in Spanish? Do you guys have any preference out there as to how you want to have this done? Anybody speak Spanish here? Okay, well maybe we might want to do it in Spanish. I think though for the rest of the group we'll do English. I'd be really curious, do you have a lot of Spanish patients in your practice? It'd be very interesting to find out how they do on this. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Uh, all in their Spanish language. All right, then you have health insurance. And then what you do is you, cheat, you put in a complaint. Now, they could have a drop-down menu here, or you can put in one. Oh, let's, uh, anybody have a complaint out there? Sore throat? You just type it in sore throat. And now this engine will take in all sorts of complaints. And then you choose a pharmacy. Best Cure sounds like a good place to send it to. And then this says that they won't sue us. And so this is what happens next. The patient then gets a series of questions. Have you had a fever in the past week? Well, let's say yes. Have you measured the temperature? Yeah, I did, matter of fact. Uh, how long have you had the fever? Oh, let's say three or four days. Do you have shaking chills? No, I don't. What's the highest temperature? Oh, it went up to 103. Are you having soaking sweats? No. See how it goes through and asks questions? Runny nose? No. Stuffy nose? No. Post nasal drip? No. Sore throat? Yeah, I have a sore throat. Swollen glands? Oh yeah, I have swollen glands. See how it keeps going on? Earache? It's actually doing a little history. Now it's asking questions about sinus pain, sinus infection, and just doing a nice little review system. Imagine if you would, it was a medical student that was just asking questions, okay? It would go on for anywhere from three to five minutes. The patients would do it, and then at the end, they'd be asked to say this. The patient then could preside, prevent their, present their vital signs, and then they can also download things like pictures. Uh, people who like to use pictures, for example, would be young families. If you have a little kid, the first thing you do is you start taking a digital camera, take pictures, and you put it in the Snapdish or Facebook. Well, now you can send pictures online to your physician about what's going on. So that's, uh, I'm having troubles because we're in transition, and I, the demo does not complete itself, so I'm going to go back to show you what some of the output would look for something else. But anyway, uh, you would do these questions. The patient that would receive a note on email saying the physician would be responding within the next 24 hours. The physician also would receive a note in their inbox in my chart saying, hey, you have an e-visit. This is what it would look like to you. It wouldn't be individual questions, but this is actually a protocol for urinary tract infections. It just lists things out, and this is a protocol. A nurse would be able to go in here at the same time, look at this and say, oh, they failed it, so I have to stay away from it. Now, if it hadn't failed it, they could actually go on and treat and charge for a urinary tract infection. Okay. So isn't that kind of nice how it's laid out for you? And then I, as a clinician, when I looked at this, I said, well, I can treat this with the urinary tract infection. We have a template. And that template is set up so that it remembers everything for urinary tract infections. And so I can treat with SEPTRA. I use this template, urinary tract infection, SEPTRA. It'll give an antibiotic. It'll put in a diagnostic code. It'll put in a charge. And it'll also provide some patient education materials, all for the patient. So I look at this information, it's urinary tract infection, click a couple buttons, I'm done. The prescription's faxed. Let's take a look at the workflow. Maybe we won't look at the workflow. 
Okay, I am going to move away from this a little bit. This is how we use it at Mayo when we do our, our phone call protocol. A patient calls in. They might call the appointment desk, they might call the nursing room. If a nurse is free, uh, they'll start doing the protocol. If they're not free, they'll be told to call back. Uh, half the time, the nurse goes through the protocol. Uh, are there any nurses in the audience right now? Uh, do you do any of these on, uh, on the phone? Nurse, you're an track contractor? No, you don't. So some of your colleagues have done that. They said it would take three to five minutes to be able to do this. At Mayo, half the time, they fail the protocol, so they have to say to the patient, sorry, you failed the protocol. Either come in or I need to talk to the doctor. So they go and find the doctor, and the doctor looks at the protocol and says, well, yeah, that's okay. Then uh, they might have the appointment desk involved if they're going to set up an appointment. The nurse will then fax the prescription. They'll give verbal instructions about that UTI. Well, how good is that? You know, you're doing this on the phone and just reading off these instructions. The time, well, it can be up to hours. And by the way, you weren't compensating this for you, this, so you were losing money with all this time. You were just basically throwing money away. Compare that with going online. The clinician used the set protocol, so it didn't take them very long. The clinician, in this case, would check prevention. There's a simple button that we look at, and it gives us the things that this patient is due for certain uh, pre uh, preventative aspects. The instructions were all written. The prescriptions were automatically faxed to the pharmacy. The time was measured in minutes, and we charged 35 bucks. Our margin on that was better than most exams that we do in the office. Which do you want to do? This or that? Pretty obvious. Huh? So save time, go online. How much does it really cost for a urinary tract infection? Well, a phone call, it's free. Clinicians lose money, you can get sued. You can go to a retail clinic by a nurse practitioner, maybe about 70 bucks, plus they might do labs. Office visit, $110, maybe do labs. Urgent care, $140, maybe do labs. ER, at least 450 bucks. Or you can do an online consultation for 35 bucks. And your margin is probably better than your urgent care visit. You may be charging more, but your margin is better. Well, let's see what happened to us at Mayo when we did this. The first thing is we made the uh, decision to go with MedFusion, and then we spent the next six months in negotiation. Mayo had never done this before. We'd had only uh, two other, well, this is the second time that we've actually negotiated with an outside client. It's the inner, to interfere with our uh, EMR. And so six months of negotiation. Then we started, and we started immediately finding out that it wasn't as good as they said it was. It wasn't as good at all. It's just like our EMRs. Uh, there's always problems. But one of the biggest problems we had was there were 376 people. We had to enter in their privileges for each person. We couldn't categorize them into nursing or doctor. So that took a long time. The second thing is, in spite of the fact that it sounded like there were a lot of people doing this, we found out nobody was doing online business. They weren't doing it. It was a couple. The third thing is the stuff was very clunky. The machine would have slowdowns. It wasn't working well. But the nice thing is we're in the Mayo Clinic. We said, we're going to meet with you every week, and we're going to work on these problems until they get better. And we did. So every week we met with NetFusion, and now they've solved a lot of these issues. The next thing we did is training. Um, what we did was in the first two months is we got everybody together and we had them be trained. And the first thing we did is have everybody in our clinic go online and be a patient. And then they would put in the term prevention and then send it to the physician. And guess what we found? The majority of our patients were our people, our coworkers, were missing out on prevention. They hadn't got their mammograms, their passengers. Our chairman of the department did not see the doctor for five years. So it was a kind of a good exercise, and we got a little analog of what was going on. We did classes, we did CDs, we did internet broadcasts. I guess at the end of that, we found out none of it all worked. It was amazing. What was the most frequent thing that people asked after for help to our help desk? What's my password? You know, it just doesn't register. And do any of you have a BlackBerry out there? 